everybody welcome to my channel today the next in the index card today series you're going to want to try this winning color scheme and the technique that I use to create this gorgeous background so I'm working off a prompt from week six called float I thought about putting jellyfish or clouds and then I remembered that I had these dandelion stamps and I thought that floats. When you blow them and make a wish, it floats out. So that's where the prompt took me. And here's the color scheme. I'm gonna use turquoise, quinacridone magenta, and gold with a little bit of black and white. So on this card, you can see the yellow peeking through the coat of gesso. That was napkin that I put on there. And I don't want that color. So I put a coat of gesso, a couple coats of gesso, but the texture is still there and it comes through in the final card and adds some interest to my background. It doesn't have to be colored napkin, it can be just plain old napkin. Now I'm mixing the colors wet on wet with a makeup sponge right onto the gessoed surface. Now an amazing thing happens when you mix the turquoise with the quinacridone magenta it makes another shade, it makes purple. So even though I'm only using two colors, I'm getting three or more tones of those colors, depending on how much paint I put on, how dark, how opaque I get it. So I am just putting this on really super easy, super messy, and that's what's making it wonderful. It's very light and airy and soft and I'm just adding color where I want it I want it broken up I want you know the blues the green, the pink and and the purple that comes by combining them I've added a little water to my makeup sponge just to change the opacity of the paint but I'm really not overthinking this state this card took well under 30 minutes, closer to 20 minutes from start to finish. And I really had no idea where I was going when I started. I just sat down, I said I had a couple hours, I just wanted to create and enjoy the process. So here I'm just deepening the colors a little bit and I'm loving the look of it so far. You might think it's a hot mess, but I'm, I'm loving the blending of these colors because I know I'm going to do some stamping on top of it and that's just going to make everything better. Once that's dry, I'm pulling out these dandelion stamps, getting an idea of how I want to set up the composition. I am want several sizes. I think maybe that I'm just going to, with the large and the medium size, but this small one I'm going to use to add some detail to the background. So I am using the same colors, the turquoise and the magenta, and I'm putting the acrylic paint on the stamp and stamping into the background. So this is going to look like there's dandelions in front of dandelions, but this is adding interest to the background. It's adding some pattern. It's breaking up the hot mess of the first layer of color. but it's also adding a little bit of texture because I'm using acrylic paint, so it's not flat. So I just keep working it away, putting some halfway off the page. Mostly I'm targeting where the magenta is when I'm stamping with the turquoise paint, but not necessarily. Here I'm getting putting the magenta on the stamp and I did wipe the stamp off before I switch colors and there I go and I'm not worried if I don't get a perfect perfect stamp because this is interest in the background it's not supposed to look like the perfect focal point every layer I add here I'm loving this even more so pick two colors that 
make a nice color when they blend and do that for your background if you're not into the turquoise and the pink like I am. And there you can see the little bit of detail. It just adds so much and makes my background so interesting. When I use acrylic paints with my stamps, I am sure to wipe them and clean them off. Now I wanted to add another detail, but I didn't want the stark black of putting paint through a stencil. So I'm using my archival ink with a blending brush and that gives a softer look to it. And I'm using, this stencil is called Art Is and it's one from the Crafters Workshop. This gives it a very soft impression. Now I could have put the text first and then did the stamping with the dandelion. It would give you a slightly different look, depend which you did first, but they're all going to work. Now I'm just going to soften the edges by going around with the blending brush and the archival ink. The overall look of this is very soft cloud-like, which goes along with the prompt float. Then I decided I wanted to bring out the texture of that napkin that was there to begin with. And I'm going to put some gold on my blending foam and just rub on the high points to bring out a little bit of bling and bring out the texture. Now I get to about that point and I think, you know, I think I'm going to stamp with that small dandelion head with the gold. So I switch direction and I add the gold stamping here and OMG, I love it. That gold with these colors works so well and well you know I love my shimmer and shine so I'm using I had two colors of paint or three if you count three counting the gold and one stamp set one stencil so you don't need a lot of supplies look at that don't you just love it so I'm just adding more. I'm very happy at this point, loving the background. I got it in a place where I didn't want it, so I wiped it off, added a little back, that bit of the magenta back in because I wiped off too much and just stamp on top. Make a mistake, don't worry, it's all fixable. And there we have it. Look at that. Cleaning off the stamps again so that they're good to go the next time I want to use them. Drawing in between layers, of course. So now I am going to edge the page with black acrylic paint and my makeup sponge. I just wanted a little darker. I know I went with the archival ink to get that cloudy effect, but I am going to want to bring that out. Oh, here's a close up of that background. I had to stop and take pictures of just the background because I loved it so much. And I will duplicate that on purpose on another one. When I work in my art journal, if I come up with a great idea, I remember it and use it on canvases, on um, home decor items. And here I'm just edging it with the black acrylic paint. You can see the napkin, how this page looked before, because the other side is still like that. That's before I put that coat of gesso on there. So 
So with my archival ink, I just did a rough stamp of my focal images. And this is allowing me to play around and decide exactly where I want everything to go before I commit and stamp. This allows me to get the sizing and the positioning just right. and figure out where the sentiment's going to go if I want a sentiment. And then once I have decided, I can proceed with the stamping. And here I am going to stamp with white acrylic paint and I'm going to apply it to my stamps with a brayer. That gives a nice even coat. I'm just going to mark, keep my finger where that bottom is so I get it about the same place. And I'm going to push the stamp down and pray that I get a good stamp, even though I've got a lot of texture on that page already. I'm just pressing it down, giving it a little extra pressure here. And there we go. Cleaning my stamp, I spray it with my Murphy's Oil Soap mixture. That just helps get that acrylic paint off. And now I'm proceeding to the other smaller dandelions. Again, brayering the paint on, position, and press. This dandelion stamp, I think, is one of the first stamp sets that I had when I started art journaling and mixed media about seven, eight years ago. And I haven't used it in forever. So I'm really happy. I mean, one of my goals with the iCADs was to use stuff that I don't normally use. And I and because it's a smaller um, substrate, I'm finding I'm using some of my stamp sets because they are smaller. They don't usually work for my bigger art journal pages. This was the stems, and I'm just brayering on the paint again and stamping. But you could freehand that if you wished. Now this background, does it have to have dandelions on it? No, it could be any focal image. I would go maybe white or black because the background's so colorful. You pick. A butterfly would look lovely on here. A bird. That's the great point. When you have a wonderful, beautiful background, you have options. And it's really whatever you like. Love the look there. The middle of that larger dandelion didn't stamp, so I'm just going to add some paint in there and paint it in so that it that I get the coverage that I want or the look I want. Easy peasy. Then I grab this old letter stamp. This was a Dilutions letter stamp. Again, one of the first stamp sets that I had. And I'm just going to pick the letters for the word wish. And I'm going to put on the paint with the blending foam and stamp the word one letter at a time. I could have put the sentiment that I had there, just breathe, which was my initial plan. But I thought, you know, the wish goes with, you, you make the wish and it floats into the air. And that's the prompt. So that's why I went with that. 
Alternatively, you can leave out the word altogether. You don't need a sentiment. For me, that's part of my art journaling. For some people, they prefer it to be without words. That S looks extremely large in comparison, but it's what it was there. And there we have it, the finished card. I'm just going to add a little bit of gold around the edge just to tie in with the gold that's on the front and it looks so good with the black that's already on there I think I would love to do this as a card do different colors all with the dandelions and whatever message you want on the card. So I hope you enjoyed this process. I hope you give this color scheme a try. I hope you make a background similar to this. Until next time, go get creative.